Just this week, Volvo has beefed up their India car lineup with the arrival of an important entry level sedan, the S60. It's all set to take on the likes of the BMW 3 Series, the Mercedes C Class, and the Audi A4. Last year, when Renuka drove it in Italy in Verona, she came away feeling that the S60 was quite different from the usual Volvo formula of being safe and, you know, kind of boring. This S60 added to it enjoyment and emotion. It was also very well equipped. Now, Volvo is saying that the S60 is going to be their bread and butter model for the Indian market. What we need to see is how it fits in in the Indian scenario and how it copes with Indian roads. The very first thing I wanted to see was if Volvo had cut any corners in the equipment list. Well, it certainly didn't seem like it from the outside. Incredibly, all S60s will get turning lights as standard along with a headlight washer system. I also found the optional key fob to be pretty cool. Now you might think that this is just a key, but with the S60, this is a personal car safety communicator or something like that. What it means is that this key fob has all your usual buttons uh, to lock, unlock, open the boot lid and stuff like that. But along with that, what it does is it also tells you about the car. If you press this I button here, it'll check with the car what mode it's in, whether it's locked or unlocked. And it'll tell you that by flashing the light next to that button. Of course, if somebody messes with the car, it also tells you over here by your ha hazard lights coming on, which really means it's a very powerful thing. Only issue is that it works within a range of 60 to 100 meters from the car. On the inside, when you go through the car's computer system, you realize what all is packed into the S60. Some of the safety features like city safety are standard on all variants of the S60 while the other features like collision warning and pedestrian detection system are standard on the top-end variants like on our petrol version. But apart from being tech-loaded, how does the S60 feel on the inside? Now the interiors don't feel all that exciting when you look at the dash design on the centre console. It seems pretty simple, pretty straightforward, but it is smartly styled. What is the other thing about good thing about the S60 is that the materials and all feel top-notch. It feels like it's made of good quality and the metal inserts that are used on the centre console, on the door panels, on the steering wheel, just help to lift it up that little bit and make the experience a little bit better. In terms of features, you get a brilliant top-spec music system with a wide range of connectivity, though it only has a single DVD slot. Our top-end variant came with powered seats for both the front seats. However, on the base kinetic version, all adjustments are manual. The seats though are really well sculpted and very comfortable. The rear bench has very well sculpted seats, they really do support you. On top of that, it also feels a lot more spacious than what the competition has to offer. Well, the back seat is a nice place to be just so long as you're not very tall because the coupe-like roofline does cut in on the headroom a bit. But I forgot everything once I got into the driver's seat and hit the road. The straight six 3.2 litre motor just took over all my thoughts. This petrol motor is an absolute bomb. It's got over 300 bhp on tap and once it gets into the mid-range, it really starts pulling. I just wish the gearbox was a little bit quicker, just that little bit. The motor proved to be quite flexible. It was smooth all around, but it also felt relaxed and creamy when just pottering around. When taking it easy, the S60 suspension also makes a very good impression. The T6 petrol we were driving was also loaded with the optional adjustable suspension. Now, Volvo clearly wanted the S60 to be a comfortable car to be in, so the suspension has been set up nice and soft. It's very pliant, so it soaks up our back roads really quite well. I'm riding on the 17-inch rims. You can go up one size to 18. You'll feel more of the road then, but still, I think it will be comfortable because right now, I'm running in advanced mode, which is the sportiest suspension setup that the S60 has, and I can feel more of the road, but it's still not uncomfortable to be here. A little later, I found that the advanced mode felt a bit choppy over the rough stuff and wasn't all that great for continuous use. When I put it into comfort mode, 
the S60 felt quite soft, though a little bit wallowy. But at the same time, don't think that this is a sloppy handler that will roll over the place. It in fact has good body control. I found that the sport mode had the best balance between firmness and suppleness for the widest range of conditions. Now, if you're looking at pushing the S60 hard, don't worry, it's more than game. Now, I got to say from the driver's seat, I'm really enjoying piloting the S60 around because the steering feels really nice and quick. You just point it into a corner and it turns in quicker than you expect. Some of that is down to the fact that this is the top-end petrol which gets the all-wheel drive system, which has torque vectoring. Which means, when you turn the steering wheel in a particular direction, the system understands where you want to go and it distributes power to independent wheels so that the car turns in quicker. It really feels good. The steering is nice and quick like I said. I do wish it had a bit more weight though, so that you got that, you know, meaty, you know, sporty feel to it. We found the S60 also had adjustable steering weight settings, so you could choose a light and easy feel for the city and a heavier sporty setting for the weekends. Though even in the heavier setting, it doesn't strain your muscles much. Talking of muscles, when you look at the S60 at standstill, you realize that Volvo has given it a nice toned look with more sportiness than we've ever seen on any other Volvo. Its face has a youthful, aggressive air to it. The shoulder line runs strong right from the headlamps all the way back to the tail lamps. The coupe-like roofline just completes the sleek, athletic package. The tail lamps at the rear tip down beautifully from the boot into the flanks to create a distinctive effect. Overall, the S60 makes quite an impact. A car that looks this good will surely help Volvo build its brand in India where looks matter so much. Along with that, Volvo has put in a lot of work behind the scenes for the S60 to be a popular car here in India. It's not a car that's just been priced right. It's loaded as well. It's got lots of equipment. It's got nice ride quality, a good back seat. Headroom is a little limited. But then on the other hand, it is a good car even to drive. Maybe not as sporty as a BMW 3 Series, but Take it all as a package and it's very, very attractive. Volvo is also offering an incredible two-year, 60,000 kilometer warranty on the car. That just includes everything except maybe the tires. That's about it. And when you factor all these things together, the S60 is going to be incredibly hard to beat. After this break, we bring you all the cars that have been making news at the Geneva Motor Show.